Hey guys, and welcome back to the observatory. In today's video, I'm going for just a little walk because we've been doing a whole lot of work on the telescope and I've been stuck at the observatory and I wanted to film something that wasn't on location. So uh, I wanna talk today about what's going on with the telescope and how we figured some things out and where we are going because, you know, I put a video out recently saying that the telescope is working and uh, it might've been slightly premature, but now we're starting to reach a point where it actually is working. And uh, I wanna talk about the fixes that we made to improve what was going on. So one of the issues we had when we were first uh, trying it out on a clear night was the stars were not tracking properly. You know, we've slewed to a target and plate solve uh, was off by a little bit. It solved the second time, it was pretty close uh, and it started working. So I assumed that everything was going fine. And then I started tracking and doing a long exposure and stars were trailing. I chalked this up to being either an issue with our polar alignment or an issue with our calculations in uh, creating the ticks per revolution of the telescope. And so we tried polar aligning the telescope using drift alignment and it just did not work. So after some time, we just decided something's not right here. Um, we're gonna have to fix this at some point, but let's move on to the next task. So after that, we started working on auto guiding. We fired up PHD2, and for some reason, like we've been running into time and time again, we've been running into the problem of auto guiding just not working. The pulse guiding commands from PHD2 were not being sent over to um, the SciTech telescope. And uh, we just kept not being able to figure out this issue. And after some time, we just decided to give up on it. Uh, the next morning I woke up and I got on the phone with Dan Gray, the owner of SciTech. And I asked him, hey, we've been running into these issues. Could you help us fix them? And so uh, we informed him of the motors that we were using that, that we purchased from him. And uh, he said, oh, turns out the manufacturer had the incorrect gear reduction ratio set for the gears uh, that drive the telescope motors. So instead of it being a 55 to 11, it was a 57 to 11 ratio, just a little bit off. And those numbers were exactly the errors that I was seeing in the tracking of the stars. They were trailing by a little bit and that percentage that off, that 55 to 57, difference is exactly what I was seeing when I was trying to take pictures with longer exposures. And so after doing that math, we figured out that was the problem solved. And then I asked him about the auto guiding and he said, oh yeah, there's a, a checkbox that uh, sometimes is checked in the settings that we need to go figure that one out. And so very deep in the menu, we turned off what was called drag mode and once drag mode was disabled, everything should be working totally fine. Pulse guiding commands should be sent to the telescope and the telescope should respond accordingly. So now we can calibrate our guiding. Uh, we're gonna use PHD2 as well as a new software called MetaGuide, which I've been not new, but new to us. Uh, I'm going to try to get that working. Uh, we were running into some issues with how it connects cameras to its software. It doesn't use the normal uh, native drivers provided by the camera. It uses a uh, native uh, Windows Direct Show Media or WDM driver. And that is how it broadcasts a much faster uh, uh, frame rate signal over to the, the guiding software. So it can calculate instead of just using longer exposures, it actually stacks shorter exposures really quickly so you can guide on the centroid of the star. And so we're gonna hopefully be configuring that uh, in the next few weeks as soon as we have clear skies. But uh, the issues we were running into was QHY, who makes our guide camera, does not support the native Windows Direct Show Media uh, drivers anymore. You have to do it through broadcasting. So you have to fire up SharpCap. And I was like, oh, that's stupid. I don't wanna do that. So um, I got on the phone, or not on the phone, on cloudy nights, I messaged the guy who makes met a guy we got the proper uh drivers figured out there from 2020 2019 something like that 
and uh, we were able to get Metaguide bringing up the camera with a native driver. Only problem is it's like three or four years old, which is kind of unfortunate, but hopefully QHY will start supporting native uh, direct show media drivers again, because that would be huge. And we could be running our camera or guide camera on the newest firmware with some superior guiding software. Um, but, and then finally, we were always running into the issue whenever we fired up our telescope. Uh, it said that our telescope was off by uh, 25,200 seconds. And sometimes it was a number a little bit higher than that. I think it was like 26,800 or something like that. Not sure about the second number, but I know 25,200 was the number it kept saying it was off by which is about seven hours actually, not about, it was exactly seven hours. And so um, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Seven hours is the difference between uh, GMT and Pacific time. So it looks like our mount's off by distance away from uh, Greenwich Mean Time anyways. So I figured out, oh, if we're off by seven hours, that's exactly what's going on there. So I, talked to Dan Gray about this and I said, hey, this is the issue we're running into. And uh, we found out that we had a uh, DLL file that our telescope was using to talk between ASCOM and the telescope control software was thinking that it was actually at about, uh, uh, what I think it was 2021 was the software that it was running off of. And so Dan was like, okay, let me compile you the newest version of our software which was literally compiled that morning. And uh, we got ourselves updated to 0.96C, which is the brand new version of SciTech. And we're going to have that now running our telescope. And when I fired it up this time, it didn't have any issues with the time being off with the telescope and the computer. So things should be working perfectly and we shouldn't have anything to be worrying about now. So now hopefully the telescope should be working just like we wanted it to. But uh, that's exactly the update I wanted to give you guys. Anyways, thank you for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you made it this far into my videos, please subscribe. I uh, love what I do and I would love to keep sharing it with people. And the more likes and subscriptions that I get helps broadcast this to a larger audience of people just like you who enjoy exactly what I'm doing. So thank you very much for watching my video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.